Our final speaker is Elaine Bernard, Executive Director of the Labor and Work Life Program at Harvard Law School and the Harvard Trade Union Program. A lifelong union member and activist, Bernard brings a refreshing balance of humor and passion for worker rights to her talks and teaching. She has conducted courses on a wide variety of topics for unions, community groups, universities, and government departments. Her current research and teaching interests are in the area of international comparative labor movements, union leadership and governance, and the role of unions in promoting civil society, democracy, and economic justice. Some of her talks and publications include From Heroes to Zeros, The War on Unions and the Public Sector, Lighting Fires versus Putting Them Out, Creating a Union Organizing Culture, Why Unions Matter to Everyone, Labor Rights as Human Rights, Social Unionism, Labor as a Political Force, Public Sector Workers and the Creation of Public Value, and Creating the Future, Strategic Planning and Strategic Choice for Unions. Please welcome Elaine Bernard. Well, the labor movement sort of had an Occupy moment before Occupy. And that sort of Occupy moment, and what I call an Occupy moment, is that Occupy sort of galvanized public attention. It finally allowed folks who've been trying to deal with what the hell's going on to focus the attention on what's wrong. Well, with the labor movement, the sort of Occupy moment came in Wisconsin last year in January 2011. <laughs> movement had been dealing with and working people with the recession and most people were a little concerned that you know having not made billions of dollars in the lead up to the great recession were all of a sudden finding the uh, themselves as being blamed for the financial crisis in the states and the budget crisis there was a midterm election in 2010 and as often happens, the uh, sitting party lost and Republicans came to government in many states. And seemingly out of the blue, all of a sudden in the state of Wisconsin, Governor Walker introduced a series of draconian uh, attacks on public sector unions. It included a... Uh, uh, attacks on collective bargaining, attacks on their right to organizing, attempts to take away their health care, force them to pay much higher rates, going after pensions, etc. And in fact, not only did this happen in Wisconsin, but in Wisconsin what happened, which has not been seen for a long time in the, uh, with organized labor, is in this very cold state in January, Hundreds of people showed up, then thousands of people, then tens of thousands of people in below zero weather showed up to protest. And in fact, organized labor itself, especially in DC, was sort of surprised. Sort of, what the hell's happening? You know, our folks aren't taking it. We then saw other states, Ohio. Ohio saw what was happening in Wisconsin, and Ohio workers started to mobilize. And across the country, by the way, in 2011, over 50 bills, initiatives, uh, uh, governor um, rights, various things were brought out that were attacks on collective bargaining, worker benefits, right to organize, all aimed at public employees with a very clear program, force the unions to spend down their budgets before the next election cycle, knock them out of politics, uh, and permanently cripple their ability to organize and to be engaged 
in the community. And it was indeed a war on public sector unions, which by the way is the largest group of union members in the United States. So attacking public employees and public sector unions is about attacking the labor movement. Uh, and so, and we've seen this not only happen in the United States, by the way, uh, it's happening now in Canada. It's happening in the UK. We see the new Cameron government. You know, I've been here when the, a number of years ago when we got up and talked about what was going on in the UK and we quoted Margaret Thatcher who said, there's no such thing as society, there's just individuals and their family. Now in the UK, the new Tory Prime Minister says, not that there's no such thing as society, he's saying there's a big society. In other words, it's so big that we don't have to have government, do it yourself. So, uh, you know, Thatcher's not dead yet, uh, alas, but uh, she must be uh, wondering what the hell's going on here. Um, this war on government and the public sector, long-term campaign, uh, you know, Grover Norquist said it very clearly, I simply want to reduce government to the size where I can drag it into the bathroom uh, and drown it in the bathtub. So it's an attempt. And you might wonder, and why, why government matters anyway? I mean, what is a public sector? Why should we care about a war on the public sector? Well, part of it is they've been campaigning as if the public sector is this wasteful entity that undermines you know, our ability as a society to live our real lives through the market and that only the private sector creates wealth, but the public sector sort of consumes it like a, like a Pac-Man. But you know, the problem is that it is the public sector and that is in fact a value-creating entity. The public sector creates a particular type of value. It's called public value. It's value we own in common. We used to have a term for that called commonwealth, those things that we as a society own in common. You know, when you take water, and it's fresh, potable water, that's a form of wealth. If it's public, it's still a form of wealth. When you put it in bottles and sell it, that's not creating wealth, that's transferring wealth. Now get this straight. The transfer of wealth without compensation is called theft, yes. not wealth creation. Yes. All the wealth of the world is owned by us, but it has been stolen. So our job is to take it back and to rebuild the commonwealth. The Occupy movement has had a profound impact on the labor movement. First, it's reminded us about a movement as opposed to an institution. Look, the dirty secret of the labor movement, and nobody would mind me saying this, the dirty secret of the labor movement is the vast majority of card-carrying union members today did not join the labor movement through any sort of action. They were not part of an organizing campaign. I speak to tens of thousands of unionists all the time, and I always say to them, who here came to the labor movement joined a union through an organizing campaign where they joined with fellow members and they won 50% plus one and they went through a campaign and they won recognition as a sole bargaining agent and then they negotiated a collective agreement. And I speak to thousands of unionists and if maybe 1% put their hand up, I know I'm among a group of organizers because the vast majority of them got a job in a unionized workplace and discovered 
they were a union member. Now, that's not a criticism. That's just a fact. And so then for the labor institution to once again become a member, it means giving folks a union experience. Now, historically, we did that by mobilizing folks and going on strike, getting involved in campaigns, those sorts of things. Uh, most of that has disappeared. So now, of course, with these latest attacks, we've got folks who have never been involved in organizing, but who are union members and who are all of a sudden discovering that they've got to be more than just card-carrying members of labor mutual support, that they've actually got to be involved in a movement and learn again how to organize, learn again what a movement is about. And in fact, a number of organizations have been rising to that occasion. It also means in the public sector, the public sector unions in particular, need to think a little bit about, is it enough to defend what we've got? Is it enough to say, whoa, don't take away my defined benefit pension plan. Don't take away my health care. Now, verbally, they can say, don't take it away because I think everybody else should have it. But it's not enough to simply say that. And I was very pleased for the opening form. We had Roseanne DeMauro and folks from the National uh, uh, Nurses Unite united because they sort of understand to hold on to what you got today, defense won't do it. You have to take the offense. You can't hold on to what you got in the labor movement unless we spread it around, unless we move to not only defend the public services, hell no. These aren't the public services that we want and imagine. The ones we want, can imagine, and deserve are way more robust, are way better. So in healthcare, it's not a matter of, well, you know, we'll just try and, as, you know, registered nurses do a little better. Hell no, healthcare shouldn't be a business. It's a right. And that's why, that's why they stand for it. So Occupy needs to join and become part of, and the labor movement needs to become part of Occupy, and we need to occupy the public sector. We need to occupy also the private sector. We need to imagine what can be, not what is, what should be, and as a labor movement, that means lighting fires instead of putting them out. So, let me end with two things. Over 180 years ago, when de Tocqueville came to America, he said one of the most interesting things. He said, in democratic countries, the knowledge of how to combine is the mother of all other forms of knowledge. On its progress depends that of all others. What Occupy has rediscovered a hundred years later is the knowledge of how to combine. And that is the beginning of the most important knowledge that exists. Today, we're, you know, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the left form, but I'm from the state of Massachusetts, and in Massachusetts, we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of one of the most important strikes in the country. It was the Lawrence Textile Strike of 1912. <laughs> led by women, immigrants, and the theme of that strike is a wonderful theme, I think, to end on. That strike became known as the Bread and Roses Strike. And trust the sisters, trust the sisters to think of this, that great movements aren't only just about defense, aren't only just about what we desire is, you know, shelter, food, 
the necessities in life. But we also deserve the joy in life, the beauty in life. I want bread, but I want roses too. Thank you.